Welcome back to another City Reach podcast. What's I'm up? your host, Ryan Maloof, and I am with two incredible, <laughs> incredible men. A, a Come Pastor on. Daniel, I love you <laughs> and love doing life with you. I love You're you, one of my bro. favorite people in the whole oh, world. thank you. And then we've got our guest today, Ryan O'Keefe, yes, who sir. just recently got married. Woohoo! So good. <laughs> uh, but we're so excited that we get to be with you yes, on this podcast. Are. And thank you for yeah. tuning in and listening. And please share a uh, like and subscribe and share this podcast with anybody and everyone that Please you know, uh, because we're just trying to be a part of the conversation. We want to be a part of the yeah. your journey of faith and what God is doing in your life. And hopefully we can just kind of add some foundation, some yeah. thoughts and help you kind of grow in some yeah. areas that maybe you haven't thought of. So join us, check us out each week. We drop on Wednesdays, but you can listen to it anytime. That's the beauty of podcast. Whatever you want. Well, yeah. today uh, we are kind of jumping into a topic that's really exciting. Yeah. Pastor Daniel, you were the one that kind of came with me, came to me with this topic and yeah. I, I'm so excited. Yeah. We're going to be talking about healing. We want to talk about healing. Uh, we, we hear a lot about healing and in churches, we pray for, for sick people all this time, but sometimes that may be like something that feels far-fetched for people that they, <laughs> like, that's what super Christian does. And that's not something for me. And, and we want to have a conversation about that today and, and share some stories. I know Ryan, you have some stories, Malou, yes. you have stories, I have stories. So, but before we do that, I would like to just lay a, a foundation from the Bible, super quick. I mean, we can we can teach on healing forever, and I love to teach the Word of God. So, so we're gonna <laughs> You're do one of the best. We're gonna actually. we're gonna do it so quick today. Teach away. So I just want to give three quick quick reasons uh, why we believe that sick people can be miraculously healed today. With that said, I mean, we still believe that doctors and nurses and first responders and medicine and all of that helps. Thank and, you for and saying that. 100%. Yes, Thank you for it's saying super that. important. So it's not like either or, it's both. Both and. and. Yeah. Uh, so let's just focus on, on the Jesus side of healing today. But And it's faith all the time, it's right? It's faith. Always faith. All Even the if you time. go to the doctor, yes. you go in faith. Yeah, we right. go in faith and so. we trust that their education and their knowledge can actually help. And yes, I mean, I believe science is from God, 100%. Yes. So, yes. so he can use all of that. But three quick reasons from the Bible why we believe sick people can be healed today. Number one, we believe the Bible says that Jesus paid the price for sickness on the cross. I want to read so glad. Isaiah. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah 53, probably the most famous prophecy about Jesus in the Old Testament, right? 700 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah the prophet says this in, in chapter 53, verse 4 and 5. He says, surely, talking about Jesus, surely he took up our sicknesses and bore our mm. suffering. Jesus did. Yet we considered him punished by God. I mean, he was hanging on a cross, right? Stricken by him and afflicted. But he, Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. So now we know in this scripture, and what we are so grateful for is that Jesus paid the price for sin on the cross, right? Took our iniquities, our transgressions. We don't have to be condemned by that. But also in the same verse, he's talking about at the same time on the cross, he mm -hmm. paid the price for sickness. In his wounds, we have been healed. So not just sin, but also healing, right? right. It's on that's the right. cross. So, right. so that's, that's the reason, number one, we believe it's in the Bible, Jesus paid. Number two, when we look at Jesus, number two, Jesus healed all the sick people that came to him. He never, ever denied one person in any story that asked him for healing and said, you know what? I don't have it for you. We have another special. No, he healed people. Once, actually, one of my favorite stories is Matthew chapter 8. We're going to read it in a, in a minute here. But he's meeting this man with leprosy, coming up to Jesus. And the man is, is asking Jesus, if you want to you can make me heal. You can make me clean. You can heal me. Yeah. And if she, you want to. If you want mm -hmm. to. And that's the yeah. question because not a lot of Christians doubt that Jesus can, but some doubt, is he willing to? Right. Or is that his will for me? And Jesus answers this man. He says, I want to be healed. Yeah. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus showed us that his will is firmly 
established. And he continues, Matthew 8, if you want to read about healing, it healing after healing after healing. And then it says in verse 16 and 17, it says, when evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him and he drew up the spirits of the word and he healed all the sick. So people came and he healed them all. And in verse 17, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our sickness and bore our suffering. Mm. So I just want to connect that to the first yeah. scripture we read. Perfect. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, so he's connecting now. He healed the sick because some, some Christians can be, well, Isaiah 53 only talks about spiritual healing. Right. No, it's not because the Bible is using that prophecy to confirm that Jesus healed physically and mentally sick people. So, so we're referring back to it. So Jesus healed all the sick. Number two, quickly, number three, sickness is not the will of God. That's reason number three. Healing is the will of God. Sickness is not. And, and the quick reason I want to share for this is when Jesus taught us how to pray, he said this to his disciples in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 and 10. Jesus is now teaching how to pray. He said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hall hallowed be your name. You recognize you know, the Lord's Prayer, right? And then yeah. the first thing he says, your kingdom come, your will be done, God, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, if you talk to any believer, whatever denomination, whatever background, and you ask them, will people be sick in heaven? Everyone says, no, of course not. We read Revelation. We, we see there's no sickness. There are no tears. Of course not. Okay, so that's God's will in heaven. No sick people. Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay, Jesus taught us to pray. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. God doesn't have two separate wills. Yeah. His will is for the sick to be healed. It's the same in heaven as it is on earth. So three super quick reasons why we even believe in miraculous healing today. Now, with that established, Jesus told his disciples, you go out and do what I did. Heal the sick, cast out demons, preach the good news. And then he said in, in Mark 16, you lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. So he's telling Maluf and myself and anyone that confesses to be a believer that you can now lay your hands on the sick and they can recover. So, so that's really, I always want to lay a foundation and now I want to talk about this because around this table, we have experienced that. We have yeah. stories, we've seen actual, the, the power of God move in our lives and through our lives. So, so Ryan, why don't you start? Uh, I know you have a passion to pray for sick people. Yeah. Why do you have that? Tell us, just tell us why. Um, initially, I have it because uh, I got saved pretty radically. And when I got saved, I was introduced to an awesome mentor within like two weeks of being saved. And so um, he, <laughs> he showed me a verse that said that I could ask God for anything. Yeah. <laughs> and if I believed that I have received it, then I will have it. And yeah. so I was like, and I, my mom had just hurt her hamstring. Mm. And uh, he was like, so why don't you just go and ask God to heal her hamstring mm -hmm. and believe that you've received it and then you'll have it. And I was like, so okay. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like three weeks saved yeah. and I go home and I go, mom, come here. And I sit down on the couch and I put my hands on her hamstring and I said, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God to heal. And we're just going to believe, I don't care what happens. We're going to believe we've received it right now. And nothing we prayed and I go, okay, we believed it. Yeah. We've received it. Yeah. I go, go in faith. And like, we just went about our day. She was like limping. She had uh, strained it in a softball game um, that we were playing as a family. <laughs> and anyway, that um, happens. <laughs> she's what? Yeah. No kidding. She was going hard. And, uh, she ended up walking, you know, five miles the next two days wow. with no pain in wow. her hamstring. And so that like opened my eyes to it. Um, and that's kind of what created the zeal. Um, but even now today, it was more so from you, you get to debating with Chris, we're with people about whether God is real or not. And mm -hmm. you're trying to persuade them to Jesus because ultimately that's the goal. Like mm -hmm. if they get healed, great, but really we want them, their, their heart hearts. transformed. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I got tired of debating. And so I <laughs> adopted this thing called power evangelism where I was like, if I can just get the power of God to flow, then now they have to confront this it reality. It will become a sign right? for it will the become unbeliever. a sign to confirm yeah. the word, yeah. um, just like the disciples yeah. experienced. And yeah. so that's what created the initial zeal for sure. Well, that's, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And I love that naive, you know, new believer, you know, yeah. Jesus said like a child, just believe, just, just right. do it. 
sometimes we just make it too complicated, right? Yeah. And, and, and we do make it complicated. We do make it complicated, Very. but, but just go out and okay. Jesus said to believe and act as if it's already there and it will be there. You know, that's what faith really is. Yes. Some of that complication comes from maybe experience, right? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you prayed for it or, 100%. you know, our, our son was really sick when we first started the church and, you know, we, we prayed and had everybody pray and had multiple people pray, had teams of people praying, had, you know, took them wherever we could. And some, sometimes along the way you get discouraged yeah. and, and you can build almost a doctrine against what yes. God's word says. And mm -hmm. I think it's really important. And I have the saying, you have the saying, what, park the bus, whatever we do, <laughs> we park our bus at Jesus heals. Yeah. And, and not to allow circumstances to cause us to lean back. I'm going to park my bus at Jesus heels no matter what. Yeah. And I think it's important. Because that. that's all we know in the Bible. That's it. That's what we know in the Bible. And then we may not understand everything else. So, But we can only do what we know. But yes. don't let circumstances yeah. create a, a thought process yeah. where we start projecting on God and his word out of hurt or pain. And I get it. I just want to say, listen, I, I understand if you're going through yeah. something that you've been believing for, for a long time, it's, it's still always like, and I love what you said at the beginning, no matter what we do, we just stay in faith. Yeah. God, I trust you. Yeah. And that's this whole thing of a child. Yeah. Like you just go home and you're like, Hey mom, you said, and, and, and the I love Bible that. says, and we're just going to pray. That's where we park our that, bus. That's yes. where we park. And I love that Jesus <laughs> did it out of compassion all the time. He didn't do it out of proving something or you know manifesting yes. his power yes. he was moved with compassion, compassion. because people are mm. suffering so if you're suffering whatever that is right now and you've been praying don't think that god has abandoned you he is moved with compassion about your mm. situation and one of the reasons we're even talking about this is for faith and hope to stir yes and and hopefully something here will just move <laughs> in people's yes. lives mm. but i want to hear more stories i'm i, I, I want to hear more stories i mean maloof mm. and ryan tell us more like mm. Mm -hmm. What are the, like some of the best experiences or, or like most mind blowing experiences you you have experienced? Yeah, Maloof. You want, you want me? You to want me? <laughs> well, I I have one particularly when I was eight years old. Um, I was uh, experimenting on the monkey bars, and uh, I, I decided. And if you don't know what monkey bars are, they're just a. It's kind of a a, a dome with all these bars on it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, that particular day in the playground, I was feeling more aggressive than normal. And I decided to do a, a flip, a backflip off the monkey bars. And I don't know why, because I've never seen anybody do it. And I've never done anything no. like this. Before and or after. Before <laughs> or after. And as I, I, I land with my feet up in the air, my arm, my left arm stretched out. I end up shattering the bone completely, broke it wow. in multiple places. Mm -hmm. The elbow um, was, was wrecked. And they rushed me to the emergency room and um, I'm in there and, and basically the doctor tells my mom, uh, we're going to have to operate. And so they go into a long operation and, and, and then once it was done, it was pins and all this kind of stuff. And they just said, you know, it's, it's never going to work properly. And I just remember my dad at that point saying, parking the bus, we're going to park the bus <laughs> yeah, at yeah. Jesus heels. Yeah. And on top of that, we're going to do rehab and we're going to do mm -hmm. everything that we can, but we're going to pray and we're going to pray every mm -hmm. day. And it was amazing over time, uh, how my arm functions completely normal. Yeah. Come on. And, and I love, I love the way Jesus did that is it? it was just a part of my dad just parked his bus at yeah. Jesus heals. Yeah. And we just, every day we woke up yeah. and we said, Hey, Jesus heals. He's mm -hmm. going to heal your arm right yeah. today. Amen. He's already paid for it. It's just a matter of, we're just going to keep believing for the manifestation and let's keep doing the, the exercises and all of that. And I, I got to watch firsthand as an eight year old Jesus defy the doctors who said it, you won't ever be mm. able to use it at full range ever mm. again because the bones all fuse yeah. together. And it was just basically a clump of bone in my elbow. And mm. you know, Jesus, Jesus had a different plan. Jesus had a different yeah. plan. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, I, so I, you it, experienced it like not just you seeing healing, but you were the receiver of healing. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I love, I love the park the bus phrase. I've yeah. never heard, I've never heard <laughs> you say that, but I love that. Yeah. Cause that, so, um, part of, part of my journey is I saw that initial healing with my mom. And then, um, I was kind of taught that maybe God doesn't heal all the time. And so I really had, I had to go into scripture because I was like where I was, 
this place wouldn't hear any opinions. It was like, what does the scripture say? So I dove in and I started studying and studying. And those points that you just made, I realized, I go, God's will yeah. is to heal, yeah. period. period. No questions asked. I look at Jesus. He is the exact representation mm -hmm. of the Father, and he healed every time. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it is. Yeah. And so I made a commitment to God. I parked the bus. <laughs> yeah. I literally said. I watch you park the bus. <laughs> I, 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 said, uh, I said, I will never under any circumstances, change my belief about your will on healing to match my experience. Yeah. I will fight till the day I die yeah. to raise my experience yeah. to match your word. And I made that um, agreement with mm. God and I started praying for people in public and praying for them to get healed. And I was seeing nothing happening and I was praying for dozens of people yeah. and I don't know the exact number. Yeah. And so I don't want to over exaggerate, but it was definitely dozens before I finally saw somebody get healed. And you kind of experience a little bit of like, discouragement, yeah. questioning in that <laughs> yeah. time, but you have to like park the bus. And I just, and I committed, I said, until the day I die. And so like, it didn't matter. Um, but eventually you find a little bit of breakthrough. And um, one of those times in Branson, uh, I was headed to school. I was going to a school there and I was driving and I saw this person on the corner, this female, and she had a um, I think she had a boot. She had something going on to where she had crutches and she was with a guy and I was going to school and trying to get there early to go for a run. Hmm. And, um, as God, one does. Yeah. As, as one of does. Course. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, but I, so I end up being, I uh, hearing in my heart, um, what's more important praying for her or going yeah. and getting your yeah. run in. Yeah. And so I turn around and went back over get him in the car and start driving them to where they need to go. I'm like, where do you need to go? She's in the front seat. He's in the back. He has her crutches. And I look over and there's actually these needle marks all over her wow. leg. Turns out they were major meth users. Wow. And um, so I was like actually all the more excited yeah. to g give them yeah. Jesus. And yeah. I was like, do y'all want to know why I turned around to come back? And I just started sharing how much God loves them. And then we get to the, where they needed to go. And I said, I would love to pray and believe God to heal you. I said, tell me about your pain right now. What is it? And she was like, it is a 10 out of 10. And I said, well, we're going to believe for God to make that a zero out of 10 right mm -hmm. now. And so we start praying and we pray one time and I go, I want your honest feedback. What do you feel right now? And she was like, it feels less. I, and, ju I just want to just even yeah. say something to you right now, because okay. this is so good. Go ahead. Because I think sometimes when we pray for people, we're afraid because it's to like, ask. We're, yeah. we're still sampling God's goodness, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like, I just, eh, eh, yeah. don't tell me, don't tell yeah. me. Just like, okay, I'm going to keep like, yeah. I love how you're just like, just tell me your honest feedback. Yeah. Like, yeah. like my God it either works is or doesn't so work. big. Yeah. Right. He's so big yeah. that it's, it, yeah. you telling me nothing's happening does yeah. not shake. Yeah. I've parked my bus yeah. Right. Yeah. and he heals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to be honest, I had had enough times where it didn't happen <laughs> yeah. where I was like, it's not going to hurt my feelings yeah. if you tell yeah, me that yeah, nothing yeah, happened. Yeah. I'm going for it. Yeah. I love and it. So uh, anyway, it went down to she gave a scale to like a 7 out of 10. And so I was like, okay, that's progress. And We're so, getting somewhere. Um, we prayed again. Mm -hmm. And same prayer. And we just prayed again. And it went down again. And then we prayed again. And it went down to zero. And she was completely healed. Wow. And we were able to share. I was able to share Jesus, tell him about my experience and my past with drugs. Wow. And it was just a cool... Um, there was a lot of lessons there. Yeah, obviously, I, I I have the same experience as you, Ryan. Like, even even doing that, even being brave enough to ask, "How are you feeling right now?" And then when they are honest and they say, "Hey, probably you know still okay, a little bit better," but to pray again mm -hmm. because there's something when they see like, "Okay, this pit bull is not gonna let go until there is mm -hmm. a healing." Like, even if they don't have faith, they're gonna start to connect with your faith in that yes. moment and be like, "Okay, we better." start actually believe that something can actually happen here and just right. pray again and again and again. And I was just going to say, like, I love that you didn't give up for, you know, pray for dozens of people and nothing happened because that could be the reason why people don't pray for sick. They mm -hmm. be, well, what if nothing happens? And mm -hmm. that's always like, well, what, yes. if, what if nothing happens? That's real. And, and I just want to... It's real to this day. Uh, yes, me. but I want to challenge that because the, the, the question should be, what if something happens? Right. I mean, what, wouldn't it be worth We're praying? basing the experience off of the negative yes. versus just the yeah, positive. But what if something happens? Like, it won't hurt for you to pray for someone. It's not going to change anything to the worse. Yes. So, but what if something actually happens and they get healed? And you have an amazing experience. You're going to be thrilled that, God, you use me. But also, <laughs> this poor person 
that's been suffering will be healed and probably open their hearts for for Jesus even more. So there's like win 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 situation going on. Yeah, hundred percent. When we pray for for yes. sick people and just recognize, I think it's real important as we process this as a believer that that the enemy's the one that wants to stop it. Yeah. Right. So you're like, oh well, you know, maybe it's not the will of the Lord. Okay, yeah. we've just well established yeah. that God wants to heal. Yeah. Right. So what is He asking us? He's asking us just to believe. Yes. Now, be sensitive. Listen to the Holy Spirit. But if you're wrestling with this, I would just, once again, park your bus at yep. Jesus wants to, Yeah. Yep. right? And so our job is just to pray. Our mm-hmm. job yeah. is just to believe. 100%. And then I don't try to build an argument onto the why. Because if you remember, the disciples came to Jesus and they were like, why? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why is this person? Yeah. Is it because they sinned? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The because parents. their fathers yeah. Yeah. sinned? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jesus is like, no. Yeah. It's so that I can show off who I am. Yeah. For the glory yeah. of God. Like, 100%. So it's not my job to like navigate all that. It's my job to actually lean into and pray. But mm. let me ask you this question then, Ryan. And, and I'm asking Which you, Ryan? this Ryan, in front of me. <laughs> if you're O'Keefe. listening, in for O'Keefe, in front of me. Uh, I'm talking about my own experience. Many times I'm nervous before I pray for people. Have you ever experienced to like... Or you just feel so full of faith and, uh, you know, but what do you feel in that moment? I have had both. Yeah. And I I just told somebody last night that in the past two months, particularly, I have had intermittent moments where um, I am obedient or not obedient to Holy Spirit's promptings of him, like telling me to go pray for somebody or maybe not even him telling me, maybe that's uh, too over the top. Maybe it's just a nut, like a nudge, nudge. like yeah. I want to go, yeah. mm-hmm. but I have this like anxiety that <laughs> yeah. smacks me yeah. and it's ridiculous because I've seen so many people mm-hmm. healed and I have settled that it's God's will to heal and yet I'm still nervous. And so, um, yeah, I think that's very real and I don't know if it ever really goes away, but I, yeah. I can say that in my in my experience the more i am obedient in the small tiny little things the yes. the easier it is to be obedient in the big things and um i guess a, a real brief story that might encourage somebody um out there or us and me, us, me. Yeah, is come um on. you know i was praying and praying for people and not seeing them um get healed. And I ended up doing two things um, that actually led to a breakthrough to where I ended up seeing multiple miracles, like one after another. And uh, the two things that I did. So the one thing was I started praying, aligning myself with God's heart. So I established that it was God's will to heal. But I started praying and saying, God, I want to love people like you do. When Mm. I see pain, Mm. Like, I want to feel the pain the in the way that you Come feel on. the pain. Yeah. And if, like, if I see brokenness, like, I want to want them to get well. Yeah. Like, I really want to want I that. I want to be angry at the enemy. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted, I just wanted to feel it. And I wanted to see it like him, too, because Jesus would have compassion, yet he'd see the recreation. He'd yeah. see the healing. Yeah. And so I was like, I want your eyes. I want your heart. I want your thoughts. Mm. Like, whenever mm-hmm. I see brokenness, I just want to be in sync mm-hmm. with you. And so I shifted my prayers a little bit like that. And then um, additionally, I made a commitment that I said, if it's not sin and I think you're telling me to do something, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So that led to like, uh, I mean, that led to like picking up random pieces of trash because I had like a little nudge like, okay, go pick that up. Or like that led to being in a public restroom and like picking up these towels, reaching into this toilet to do this thing, (laughs) scrubbing this trash can. I'm like, what am I doing? But I'm just like... If it's not sin yeah. and I think it might be God, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And so all of a sudden praying for a person on crutches became the same thing as picking yeah. up a piece of trash. Yeah. It, there was no distinction yeah. in my brain because it was, I just decided I'm just going to be obedient. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost interesting. It's a lesson that I have to like learn over and over, right? Like where it's sometimes you get off course on that and you start to not obey the promptings immediately and got to remind yourself like, all of the freedom in life and all of the joy in life and all the healings and miracles are found and just obeying the voice of yeah, God. Yeah. So be obedient to his did. word. And, and, and I mean, we could share probably, well, I know hundreds of more stories. Yeah. Like I've experienced so many things around you, my love you. And I want to encourage you, if you want more stories, grab us in the lobby. Let's talk about healing. Let's <laughs> yes. just give, bring glory let to Jesus. Let us pray for you. <laughs> and let us pray for one another. And we want to hear your stories too. But maybe you're part of this podcast today and you like... Okay, I feel something. I want to. I want to. I want to be used by God and pray for for people. Ryan, what would you say? What is the first step our listeners can take today? So good, you mm-hmm. know. 
Uh, the first step you can take today, I think, I think there's three things. It's establish that the will of God is to heal. It's align yourself with God's heart through prayer. So the word, we worship God in spirit and in truth. So truth, spirit, we align with his heart. And then you take action, right? Just like, do it. You just do just it. Just do it. You, <laughs> you just walk up, your nervouses all get out, and you are like, you're panicking yeah. in your mind. And you don't have to start with a stranger. Start yeah. with a family member. 100%. Like you have a sister, like you, you have a brother. your mom. Yes. yes. <laughs> like yeah. someone, and that may feel awkward when never pray in my family before. Hey, let's start that. Let's just... just you can say that. Let's start you now. You can say that. Yeah. You can walk up to somebody and say, yeah. hey, this is really awkward yeah. for me. Yeah. But I believe that God will heal you, and I hate seeing you in pain. Yeah. Can I just say a yeah. quick prayer for you? It'll yeah. take 10 seconds. So we want to just end with that and tell you, whoever you are, hopefully you're listening together with someone or you're taking this to your small group, don't hesitate. Next time you you feel that nudge and you're like, hey, maybe I should pray. Yeah, you don't have, you don't have to call on, on, on a leader in the church. You don't have to be a super Christian because none of us right. really are. We're just obedient Christians that want to give God the glory. So Take the step. Uh, and and be a part of something. And we want to hear your stories. Like, mm. share your miracle stories. Testimonies will breed more miracle because we're going to get hope and be inspired by one another, what God is doing, not just in the past, but what he's doing in, in our time today. So Amen. good. Yeah. If you're going to park your bus at it, you got to put on the emergency brake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> An emergency brake is God's word. Right? Yeah. You got to yeah, right. settle in yeah. your heart. Yeah. This is real. And then I love what you just said. You got to just go out there yeah. and do it. Nike. And, and just you do just it. start yeah. laying hands on people yeah. and, and and watch what Jesus will do. Well, it has been our honor to be with you today. Wherever you have found yourself, I pray that God would continue to open doors and bless you in ways that you never Come thought. On. I pray for peace over Come you. Come on, we do. And I pray for healing in your body, yes. in your mind, in yeah. your heart, and for those that you love. Thank you, Lord. That I just thank you, Lord, that you're going to you're gonna move Come in on. their life. We are, love being with you. We're so honored honored to spend time with you and keep listening share this podcast let others know about it and uh, we'll just continue to to reach in and, and, and wrestle with some more topics yeah. so if there's something that you would love for us to to, con to have a conversation on around god's word uh, please just go to our website and contact us and just put at the top podcast and we would love to answer some of those questions until next week we love you and have a great week and we'll see you on sunday see ya see ya